Alrighty guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm going to be talking about the Nissan 350Z versus the 370Z. This is going to be the true guide. I'm going to give you everything you're going to need to know about this car and the 370Z, whether you're determining which one to purchase or just want the specs and information. This is the video for you. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, like the video and subscribe and let's get straight into the video. So I'm going to be covering a lot of information in this video. I'm going to be talking about visuals, specs, pricing, um, just the technicals, uh, value for money, all sorts of things are going to be covered, but I think it's important to go with the visuals first. Now, most people don't know the difference between a 350Z and a 370Z, so if you're trying to buy the newer Carter Flex, no one's going to give a shit. They're not even going to be able to tell the difference between the old and the new one. But that being said, they actually are quite different looking. They have the same shape, pretty much the same style going on. But the 370Z obviously has different headlights, it has different tail lights, and it is actually wider, it is shorter, and it is lower as well than the 370Z. It's important to note that even though these cars are so similar in almost every way, the 370Z doesn't use one part from the 350Z. So they look the same, but they're not the same. Now the 370Z is a lot more curvier and voluptuous at the back. Um, but the 350Z is 100% the more timeless looking car. The 350Z, in my opinion, will age a lot better than the 370Z. The 370Z is curvy and edgy, and I think it looks pretty good for now time, but it's not going to look timeless like the 350Z does. So that's something to take into account. Are you more edgy or are you more classy? Okay, although looks are subjective, one thing that is not subjective about these cars is the performance. On paper, the 370Z is just a better car. That's just how it is. It has more power, so the, the 350Z has about 300, 306 horsepower, and the 370 has about that 330 range. So you're getting a bit of an increase in horsepower. Um, you are getting better handling out of the vehicle due to it being shorter and wider. You're also paying a lot more money for the 370Z. 350Zs, 100% is the best value in my opinion. So if you're after value on these cars, the 350Z is definitely the best you go. Because the difference between the 370Z and the 350Z is definitely not drastic enough to pay that huge price difference. Unless you're really wanting a new car, then you can buy a 370Z and you can get the warranty and stuff like that. You're obviously not going to be able to get warranty and all those other protection if you're buying an older used car, especially because 350Zs are starting to become more and more clapped out each and every day. Now, if you are after an automatic on the cars, the automatic in the 370Z is definitely a better choice. Um, you only get five gears in the 350Z for your auto, but you get seven um, on the 370Z. But the 350Z auto is still really good, so I shouldn't bag it out. I've, I've heard a lot of great things about the auto in these cars, so if you're not looking for that full driving experience, a little bit more relaxing, the auto on both of these cars are pretty good. Uh, when it comes to the manual, the 370Z has an auto rev match feature, which was like the first car to implement this feature. So it's a manual, a downshift, and it rev matches for you, so you don't have to do any of that. Um, some people like that, some people don't like that, but either way, that is a pretty cool feature. Uh, important to note, the older 350Zs, they did have some reliability issues with um, some of their older transmissions. I think it is the CD009 transmission is the one to get out of the two, um, out of the other transmission types. Now, zero to 100 on these cars are relatively similar as well. You're gonna be getting about that, you know, five and a half second range on the 350Z, five and a half to 5.9, obviously depending on different engine types. And the 370Z, you're running like low fives. Uh, so the zero to hundreds are very similar. Um, you're not getting much difference. A lot of people just call the 370Z the 350Z 2.0 because it is basically just an improvement over the vehicle in pretty much every way. It pretty much improves on everything that this car improves on. Me personally, I just like the 350Z a lot more design-wise, uh, just in my opinion. This color and this shape is a lot more attractive to me, but obviously looks are subjective. And if you want a newer car, the 370Z is a pretty good choice. It is starting to get really dated because they have been making this car for a long time now. Um, the Zs haven't been known to have great interiors. They're not lux. They never were meant to be lux. Um, the 350Z interior is pretty damn basic. I'll show you guys in here. It's not anything fancy, although you do get these beautiful orange leather seats, which I absolutely love. The interior is very simplistic. You're just getting dash, a little cubby here. You get a little cup holder down there. 
Everything's really simple in the interior. You got all your storage buckets and everything back there. There's nothing crazy going on with the interior, but the 370Z interior, although it does improve the interior quite a lot, it's not drastic changes. Um, you do get some like nicer stitching in the center console, and you do get a little bit of a nicer interior experience, but Z cars, they've never been, oh, amazing interior until the 400z actually that car looks phenomenal on the interior but you're really not getting too much benefit from the interior um in my opinion if you're going for the 370z so the next important thing to talk about is pricing now the 350z and the 370z there isn't a drastic difference in pricing there is a premium on the 370z obviously it being the newer model and the newer car especially if you're buying it new uh, but you can get some really great 350z bargains out there still there's still some hidden gems like this one i bought this one with 11,000 miles a few years ago so this is my absolute baby they are still out there and I got this for a lot cheaper than a 370Z. But that being said, if you want the 370Z and you are definitely set on the 370Z, the early 2009 models of the 370Z are actually really damn cheap and they're creeping into the price ranges of the 350Z. The 350Z is going up and the 370Z is going down. And that is another very important thing to take into account when buying these cars. If you are buying a 350Z, the value on the car is gonna hold. It might even go up and you might even be able to sell it at the same price after driving it because these cars are becoming more sought after. The 370Z, well, that's not the case. It is a newer car and they're actually still making it, even though it's been a goddamn long time. What is it, it's been 13 years or something that the 370Z has been made? Um, so that's something to take into account. The 370Z is going to depreciate more, especially if you buy it new, it's going to depreciate a lot because Z cars have always been cheap performance sports cars. So they've always been one of the best bang for your buck cars that you can buy on the market. So just take that into account um, if you're planning on buying a newer car. But, you know, a lot of people don't care about depreciation when they buy a new car. They just want a new car. So like I said, something you just need to consider. Now I did briefly touch on this point before and that's being reliability. The 350Z and the 370Z are pretty much identical when it comes to reliability. They are relatively similar engines. They're based on the same kind of platform. These cars are reliable and they always have been pretty damn good. Uh, a lot of people would just say, oh, these 350Z's bad with oil. But like, look at any other normal sports car on the market. They use oil. Yes, the rev up does have some issues sometimes when it comes to oil consumption, but that's not really a big deal. Just do your oil changes. I know people are lazy and they don't like to do them, but that's just what we gotta do in order to support our pride and joy. Now, the next thing is modifying these cars. If you modify a 350Z, easily going to be faster than a 370Z. If you modify a 370Z and you modify a 350Z, you both tune them the fuck up, they're going to be pretty much the exact same. There's going to be hardly any differences. So if you're planning to dump money into the engine, or just dump money into the car with suspension and brakes and all that stuff, you're probably just better off buying the cheaper 350Z and then putting the money into the 350Z and just walking all the 370Z's passes out there. If you're not planning, you just want to keep the car stock or you just want to do a couple things like wheels and suspension and you just want the car better from the factory, the 370Z, go for it. It is the better car and you will be able to get them with warranties and stuff still. And this thing, it being what, fucking 18 years old now, it ain't gonna have a warranty. Now, in my personal opinion, the 350Z will always have more sex factor than the 370Z does, but I would love to hear your guys' opinions. Do you like the 350Z more or the 370Z more in terms of styling? Which one is your favorite? Because I know the 370Z is a little bit more aggressive and the 350Z is more classy in that sense, but I would love to hear your guys' opinions on which one you actually think is the better looking car. So let me know down below. So that is going to be the end of today's video. Yes, I do look like a dog hanging out of the window. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope this tip taught you something about the 350Z and 370Z. It's not crazy super in-depth with the specifications and stuff, but basically the 370Z is better in pretty much every single way over the 350Z in performance-wise and stuff like that. But the best bang for your buck is still the 350Z. And in terms of holding the value and keeping that hard-earned cash that you've spent on these cars, 350Z is still the better choice. Um, it also has more clout factor because DK Drift is bad boy in Fast and Furious Don't Give a Drift. So thank you for tuning in. My name is Coyote. I do a bunch of content on the channel. I do a lot of Z content. I do vlogs and I do other sorts of videos. Anything you guys suggest to me down below, I'm willing to open up and try that sort of content. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.